Greetings and welcome. Today we learn about Cochrane boiler. There are very few differences between Cochrane and simple vertical boiler. Cochrane boiler is the modification of simple vertical boiler. There are many horizontal fire tubes inside the boiler cell. These are some horizontal fire tubes. The boiler cell is made of steel plates into a cylindrical form and it is riveted or welded together. This is welding and both the ends of the cells are closed by end plates. Bottom and the top of the cell is closed by end plates. Let us understand the Cochrane boiler from the point of view of classification of boiler. Cochrane boiler is a fire tube boiler. It is multi-tubular boiler. Simple vertical boiler is a single tube boiler but it is the modification so this is multi-tubular boiler. The axis is vertical so this is vertical axis boiler. This is internally fired boiler. We will see the location of the furnace and accordingly it is classified as internally fired boiler. Then it is natural circulation boiler. This is low pressure boiler. Cochrane boiler is used for low pressure steam. And it is it can be easily transported to any place that is why it is a portable boiler and this is a coal fired boiler. Definitely any solid fuel can be used in a Cochrane boiler but it is intended for coal firing. Now the main parts of Cochrane boiler. Now first is the cell. It has a cylindrical drum with a hemispherical dome at its top. It is a cylindrical cell. Next is combustion chamber. The burning of the fuel takes place in the combustion chamber. This is combustion chamber. Great. It is the platform on which the fuel is burnt. So this is great. The platform for burning the fuel. Then SP is the place where the S is deposited at the bottom of the crate. This at the bottom of the grid, this is this is S pit. Then flue pipe, the hot gases enter into the combustion chamber through the flue pipe only. It is a small passage that connects the combustion chamber and the firebox. So here you can see this is the flue pipe connecting the combustion chamber with the furnace with the furnace. Then fire door. This is the fire door through which the fuel is fed into the furnace. Then furnace. This is the furnace. Then flue pipe. Flue pipe I have already mentioned. Then fire brick. There are some fire brick lining lining uh, around the combustion chamber to minimize the leakage or loss of heat to the atmosphere. Then fire tube. This is very important. Fire tube. These are the fire tubes, the horizontal fire tubes connecting the combustion chamber and the smoke box. The fire tubes helps in exchange of heat from the hot flue gases to the water surrounded around it. The hot flue gases from combustion chamber travel to the smoke box through these fire tubes. Then chimney. The chimney is attached to the smoke box. It is used to transfer the flue gas coming from the fire tubes to the atmosphere. This chimney discharges the smoke from the smoke box to the atmosphere. Then manhole, like a simple vertical boiler also, there must be one manhole. This is not shown in this diagram. 
then comes the smoke box smoke box the place before the chimney and it connects the chimney and the fire tubes now let us mention some specifications of the cochran boiler the specifications of cochran boiler may vary depending upon the requirements and specific applications generally the height of the cochran boiler is 5.75 meter the diameter of the cell is 2.75 meter and a working pressure is 6.5 bar that is why it is called low pressure boiler and maximum it may go up to 15 bar the capacity of steam production in a cochran boiler is 3500 kg per hour it may be increased up to 4000 kg per hour the tubes diameter fire tubes diameter are generally 6 cm or 0.06 m the efficiency of cochran boiler ranges from 70 to 75% let us understand the construction and working principle of a cochran boiler have a look at this model of cochran boiler for some main components and to understand the working principle I have not shown all the mountings because I have mentioned about the mountings in my previous video on simple vertical boiler. Only the arbitrary position of blow of cock and feed check valves are shown here. You can see the grate below the furnace and the fire door as well. If I make the lower part of the cell transparent you can see the hemispherical furnace and the short flue pipe from the furnace to the combustion chamber You can also see the location of blow of cock at the bottom of the water space Now you see the horizontal fire tubes from the combustion chamber to the smoke box you may have noticed the fusible plug above the combustion chamber look at the smoke box and the chimney for flow of smoke to the atmosphere the burn gases flow from furnace to the combustion chamber through the flue pipe then to the smoke box through the fire tubes and to the atmosphere through the chimney so this is the grate above the ash pit grate is the platform for the solid fuels fuel is fed through the fire door and air enters from below through the openings on the grate this is the furnace with the flue pipe the short flue pipe connects furnace and the combustion chamber for passage of combustion gases the horizontal fire tubes connects combustion chamber and the smoke box You can see that the fire tubes are surrounded by the water for efficient heat transfer. The combustion chamber and the fire tubes are enclosed by the main cylindrical cell. The hot gases passes through these fire tubes to the smoke box. Look at the fusible plug above the combustion chamber. So this is the upper part of the cylindrical cell. the most of the space is occupied by the steam this is smoke box from where the smokes are discharged to the atmosphere with the help of a chimney the smoke box is provided with a door for inspection and other purposes this is the door this can be opened like this if the inspection is required This is another inspection door at the other end. 
at the combustion chamber end. This is the door. For better understanding, we can see the cut section at the vertical front plane. So look at the path followed by the burn gases for effective and maximum heat transfer. This way the hot gases is escaped to the atmosphere. Notice the position of the fusible plug. This is blow off cock. This is fusible plug. If water level goes down, the plug is melted and water enters through this hole to the furnace to stop the fire. Like this, yes. Now you can see the cut section at vertical side plane. Look at the multiple fire tubes surrounded by the water. So water receives heat from the top of the furnace and also from the fire tubes. Now application advantages and disadvantages of Cochrane boiler. The application is, the main application is the steam produced by Cochrane boiler is used as working fluid for steam turbine. Also the process application in industries, chemical processing, pulp and paper mills, refining units, all these comes under process steam. Then some advantages, low installation cost, since this is a low pressure, low capacity boiler, the installation cost is less and its transportation is easy, then operation and handle is also easy and it occupies less floor area but vertically it occupies more space. Some disadvantages are low capacity, limited pressure range, this is a low pressure boiler. Inspection and maintenance are difficult because it is a small size boiler. As a student of thermal engineering, from the examination point of view, you may have to draw a schematic diagram of a Cochrane boiler and to level different parts and to explain the working principles. You may practice. To so let us see what are the main parts. This is the air speed below the grate and grate is above the air speed grate is the platform for burning fuel solid fuel this is the fire door through which the solid fuel is fed into the furnace for burning this is a this is the main cylindrical cell surrounding all the arrangement within the boiler this is smoke box which receives the smokes from the fire tubes and discharges the smokes to the atmosphere through the chimney. So this is the chimney. Steam stop valve. The valve to regulate the flow of steam from the boiler to the required place. This is anti-priming pipe. We will discuss anti-priming pipe in a couple of minutes. This is the safety valve. It helps release the steam if the steam pressure goes above the working pressure. Pressure goes to monitor the pressure inside the boiler. This is the manhole through which a man can enter into the boiler when it is not in working condition, uh, working state. That means during the shutdown, a man can enter into the boiler for inspection or repairing, etc. The water goes or water level indicator. It indicates the level of water inside the boiler and if the water level goes down, then the boiler is fed water with the help of a feed pump through a feed check pump. 
this is the place the combustion chamber combustion continues up to this position there is a one fire brick lining to reduce the loss of heat to the atmosphere and this is the short flue pipe or flue tube connecting the combustion chamber and the furnace this flue pipe is also surrounded by the water you can see the water receives heat from the surface of the furnace from the flue type surface from the combustion chamber and through the fire tubes this is the blow off cock this position is most bottom part of the boiler through which the water or mud deposited is discharged and that is a cleaning process basically these are the fire tubes connecting the combustion chamber and the smoke box multiple tubes and this is the top part the hemispherical dome the maximum of this part is actually covered or occupied by the steam and this steam is taken away from this place through this anti priming pipe to the required place by opening the steam stop valve now anti priming pipe it is basically a perforated tube or pipe like this say so this is the dome shaped hemispherical part where the steam is there now this steam at the top of the cochran boiler or any boiler are not 100% dry it may be wet steam also and this wet steam means the steam carries some fine water particles along with the water vapor or steam when the steam enters into the into the pipe or delivery system then the water particles as well as the steam strikes these surfaces and the water particle that way lose its momentum and that is why it may cannot escape to this delivery system or delivery pipe or to throw the steam stop valve it may not go out of the steam chamber so it helps to take the dry steam only to the required place the so water particles are retained by by striking on the surface of the perforated tubes which is also known as the anti priming tubes or anti priming pipe in the next class we will discuss about babcock and wilcox boiler which is a water tube boiler Thank you for watching.